and all of a sudden I find myself 100 metres away from the turn off to the Gibb River Road so I'm all set to go. I've got my first uh, lot of food so the first 10 days of food that I've packed and then I've uh, loaded about just over 20 litres of water as well to get me through the first two or three days. I've spoken to the visitor centre as much as I can about what to expect on the road. Obviously they cater for four-wheel drivers and not bicycles out there but the other decent thing the visitor centre has is um, a guide to the Gibb River Road which gives a lot of information about the places to stay along the way, the campsites and that sort of thing. There's a site called May River Crossing which is just about, I think it's about 30, 40 k's in so I'll just uh, go there and take it easy and um, have a nice relaxing night and um, get onto the road proper the next day. One of my goals during my round the world trip is to cycle the Gibb River Road which is located in the Kimberley region of Western Australia. It's about 700 kilometres of off-road trail between the towns of Derby and Kununurra and it's super remote but super exciting to go out and explore because it's one of the last wilderness areas of Australia but it is so remote that there's very limited opportunity to stock up on fresh food and, and even water so even though it's a couple of months before I get out there the journey starts here in Perth I'm about to start chopping up all of these veggies about three to four weeks worth to dehydrate and make some food packages to send up that I can pick up along the way. months later now. I've done almost 4,000 kilometres since leaving Perth heading north and I've made it to Derby. Just picked up my food package and I'm actually taking a look at it for the first time and just hoping that it hasn't gone disgusting and mouldy or anything. So let's we'll see what we got. And here are the veggies and they seem... they seem alright. I don't know what I'd do if they ended up being like disgusting. It actually smells pretty good and I think we're going to be good to go. I'll um, be chilling out here. I've got a nice air-conditioned room at the moment. I had a nice long ride to endure getting here from Port Hedland. Um, there's not too much in between, but I'm going to chill out for another day, get absolutely organised to um, hit up the Gibb River Road. I can't wait. in Winjana Gorge. It's absolutely beautiful. We've got these massive cliffs that line the sides of the gorge. Uh, these are actually limestone cliffs from the Devonian period about 360 million years ago. So they formed when this area was under the ocean. You can actually explore these cliffs and find a lot of fossilized um, shells and other forms of sea life that used to occur here. There is a bit of water here behind me which looks tempting for a swim but there are about a hundred reasons why I'm not gonna go in there and I'll show you that a little bit later when they're out and about. 
But um, for now, yeah, just keep walking this gorge and see what we can find up here. It's absolutely beautiful. returning to the water now where I was at the beginning and the sun's out a little bit more which means so too are those hundred reasons why I'm not jumping in for a swim and here is one of them just here that's freshwater crocodile um, while it's probably all right to swim in a water hole if there's just one or two of them I'm certainly not jumping into a place like this where it's absolutely swarming with them so it's something that um, I'll have to be wary of when I'm filling up uh, my drinking water from creeks and going for swims and especially further east because uh, further east is where the saltwater crocodiles are and they're the ones that are going to be quite happy to eat me if they have a chance. I don't know if it's too early to say when I'm just five days into the ride, but I'm having the absolute time of my life out here and it's already become the highlight of my whole trip so far. Just be out here experiencing nature, the, the wilderness of the Kimberley on a bicycle has just been an absolutely incredible experience. Even though it is a massive challenge, it's just so rewarding to, to be spending time in a place like this, seeing the beautiful wildlife that live here. Um, after Winjana Gorge yesterday morning, I returned to Leonard River Crossing and decided to just camp there for the afternoon and just relax watching all the animals come into the water to drink and go on for swims myself when it got too hot. In the evening I got a bit of a shock when a couple of crocodiles emerged right where I was swimming to start feeding on the bats that were coming in as the sun went down. I'm so glad that I took the time to prepare all the food I did at the beginning um, back in Perth. Having all this food with me has meant that I've just been able to relax and really experience the place slowly. I look forward to spending the night here and uh, tomorrow I'm off to Bell Gorge. What I've heard is a spectacular place to visit so I'll check that out and keep having fun out here. starting to lose track of the number of days that I've been out here on the Gibb River Road but I'm pretty sure it's day number 12 and I've made it to a place called Mornington Wilderness Camp which is within a wildlife sanctuary owned and managed by a private not-for-profit company called Australian Wildlife Conservancy or AWC and they own 23 sanctuaries throughout Australia and own more land for conservation than any other private organisation in the country and in Australia where the government seems to be lacking in similar dedication to strict conservation. It's important that we have these private companies. Bush Heritage is another example that buy up huge tracts of land and actively manage them for conservation. 
here at Mornington, for example, all of the cattle that are very destructive in the environment have been removed from the area and that's allowed the vegetation to recover and a lot of threatened species to increase in abundance throughout this region. As well as being a great place to come and learn about the environment in Australia and the threats that the wildlife faces, there are a number of awesome spots to visit and I'm in one of those now. It's called Diamond Gorge. Uh, the best way to get out there is in a kayak so I'm about to do that right now and see what we can discover out there. Right now I'm just trying to sneak up on an egret but they're very shy birds so he's likely to take off at any second. He's just hunting on the edge of the water. Let's see. Managed to get a close look at him. Just about to disappear around the corner. Mornington turned out to be such a great place full of great people that I've actually ended up staying here for 11 nights um, and have had a great time but the day to leave has come so I'm going to be re-entering the Gib and exploring a few more gorges over the next week or so. I've just packed uh, my second food package about 10 days worth of food so I'll be right for the next while or so. Water's starting to become more of an issue though because I'm starting to go through about 10 litres of water a day so it's just becoming more crucial that I find places where I can stock up on drinking water. <laughs> There's only one way to enter this place and it's from up there, so I'm gonna go and check it out. things about the Kimberley is that if you're a little bit adventurous it doesn't take too much effort to get away from the popular tourist spots and find your own private piece of paradise. I've just come down from the top section of Manning Gorge and I've found this beautiful piece of river here which I've had all to myself for the last couple of hours just been having a picnic under a rock overhang reading The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama and um, generally just having a nice peaceful time and I've just swam downstream as far as I could and found a spot where I'm going to spend my afternoon and that's a beautiful white sandy beach and not only that but I've also been scouring all the rock faces around which you should always do when you're in the Kimberley because you never know when you're going to find a great example of Aboriginal rock art like this one here. So 
So, like I said, I'm just going to be enjoying my afternoon on my own in this beautiful part of the world. It's 30 days now since I left Derby and I can say that I am ready for this trip to end. I'm utterly sick of the Gibb River Road. Not the people and the places that I'm visiting. Everywhere has been absolutely amazing, but just the road itself is driving me absolutely mental. Each day is just a harder and harder mental and physical battle against the road and, and I'm just ready for it to end. It's starting to get really hot, getting into mid-October now and uh, for example it's not even 7am in the morning and it's approaching 30 degrees and I'm just absolutely sweating my ass off packing up camp. The flies are getting bad, might need to come a bit close for you to see but from the moment the sun comes up to when the sun comes down there's just an absolute ton of flies around, they never leave you alone. I'm sick of the food that I'm eating, it's been the same stuff now for the last four weeks or so and I'm ready for a bit more of a varied diet, there's only so many nuts and dried fruit that you can take. But I am learning more about the bush food that's around so I'm starting to supplement my diet with stuff that I can find around the place and one example is the fruit of this magnificent tree, the Boab, an icon of the Kimberley and at this time of year you can just look around and 
sometimes you can find the fruit ready to go on the ground or pick it from the tree itself and inside these boab nuts uh, is some fruit that you can eat it's pretty dry um, it's not like a lush mango or anything but um, it does have a slight flavor that is a bit more exciting than the boring food that I've got to eat so I've been eating this it's meant to be high in magnesium and um, vitamin C so keeping me healthy as well so I'll add these to my breakfast this morning and then get going for another wonderful day on the Gibb River Road fortunately I am very near the end in a couple of days I'll be crossing the Pentecost River and then visiting El Crestro Station and from there it's just a one day ride on beautiful bitumen into Kununurra and that'll mark the end of this particular trip. Come on! Woo! Bitumen again! El Crestro Station turned out to be the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It was an absolute paradise and the perfect way to spend the end of my time on the Gibb River Road. And now, 35 days later, and more than 1,100 kilometres covered on the road, I've made it to the other end. I'm exhausted and ready for a break. Um, still looking forward to the next adventure, but for now, happy to call this one over and done with, and the Gibb River Road well and truly conquered by the bike. Mwah! Thanks for watching. If you want to see more as I cycle around the world, make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's another video for you here. I have a daily diary on Facebook and photos on Instagram, so check them out in the links below. Once again, thank you. Stay safe, never stop dreaming, and I'll see you next time.